Welcome to Super Movie Brothers. Let's start the show. This is a podcast on the Podfix Network. You can check out more shows like it at podfixnetwork.com. Did he freeze? I can enter up in headlights. <laughs> Are you finished? Bastic! Just drive! Okay, calm down! It's so primitive! It's my brain, you god, you idiots! The boy trying to penetrate! Serving justice to a man who stole your vibranium and murdered your people. Justice your king couldn't deliver. The reason I don't kill you where you stand is because I know who you are. Are you sure it's a good idea to take your ex on a mission? Yes. Play nice. Now that I have your attention. Welcome to Super Movie Brothers. Super premium review of... Black Panther. We are going to skip a regular episode this week, uh, mainly because I am going to be going on vacation, and that will leave a a, a gap in 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 our releases. So I decided uh, we would just release Black Panther review as its as its own mini sode, like we normally do for mm-hmm. them. We won't have any regular episode this week, but just to pad this episode out a little bit, we are going to have a trailer park. Right in the middle of our Black Panther review, which we'll do up front. Then we'll do a mini trailer park for um, Ant-Man and Wasp. And then we will do our full spoilers for Black Panther. Yeah. So let's just uh, let's get into Black Panther, man. So uh, just a little bit about how I saw it. I, I saw it in... I saw it in the Dolby Digital Theater because I am now in love with watching movies in that format. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. And 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 like I said, the only bad experience I've ever had watching films in the Dolby Theater was with Blade Runner because of those heavy bass drops that they right. do in that film. That's the right. only thing that, that really caused it. So yeah, I blame Hans Zimmer for that one. But um That's just yeah, John Hans, no, uh, Hans Zimmer's music. <laughs> I won't see Venom in, in, in that theater either because that 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 score is very Hans Zimmer esque. So right. I know that Venom's gonna be that Yeah, I've only seen the Blade Runner movie and also War of the Planet of the Apes, which was really, really good in the Dolby. And um this is definitely a movie that I would have seen in the Dolby theater. I just um timing wise for when I saw it was a sold out theater at like eight fifteen and we had a little bit of confusion as far as um the tickets because I kind of forgot that you guys were going to see it on Sunday morning in the Dolby. And I think months ago you got the tickets and I kind of forgot about that. And I think I was originally going to go watch it with you guys. No, yeah, we were, we were going on Friday night, but I was deathly ill on Friday. Like I came home from work like an hour and a half early and and Lauren was working from home and she's like, are you home for good? I said, nothing. I just walked to the bathroom, closed the door. And then she said, the only thing you could hear was, And that's I, I I apparently I sound like a dinosaur when I'm throwing up. So or that, alien. Yeah, I mean that was that was a thing. Like it, something came out of me. Yeah, and I just flushed it. So <laughs> <laughs> but that that was my that was my that was my Friday. So, but it's I, I passed out for six hours after I came home from work. Like I took I took oh, medicine. Man, that sucks on your weekend off. You yeah, know? I I I just I was out for. I woke up. I went to sleep around like four o'clock. I woke up at ten o'clock. And I was like, wow. And I, I, it's not like I stayed up all night either. I went to bed by like 1230 that night, too. I was up for two and a half hours and went back to sleep most yeah, of the weekend. Yeah, you know you're sick if you're doing that. Yeah, I was like down and out most of the weekend. Sure. And I just slept the whole time. I mean, I had, what a, you have to do. I had a birthday party to go to on Saturday. And I was like, oh, it was one of those things where it's like it's catered. So we had to like it was paid for us already. So it's like you can't cancel because someone already wasted like money for you right. to be there. So I had to you go. show up for the most minimal amount of time possible and just get out. 
Yeah, it yeah. was. And, and by Sunday, I was feeling better. And then I was like, great, I get Sunday. And that's when I was like, all right, 10 a.m. Sunday morning. <laughs> let's go see Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I saw it in probably the worst seat possible, which was like the the like the top middle esque row where like the aisle is, but the very, very end where like part of the screen is cut off from like the stairwell wall, you know? So You're not tall enough to rise above that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sitting next to like some fourteen year old kid who has like family members like behind him, the side of him. He's like they're passing popcorn like behind each other and everything like that. So luckily they were kind of low key as far as not being too you know distracting or or loud or anything like that but it was still a hot theater with a sold out crowd um it was pretty much a tame crowd though it wasn't too rowdy sunday morning 10 a.m this shit was sold out yeah 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 there was no empty seats in that theater so uh it's definitely Breaking, uh, breaking records oh, it is. For, I mean, for Marvel. I think it already broke a record. It's already beat Justice League's total domestic total from last year. <laughs> in one weekend. In four days. Yeah, $235 <laughs> million dollars for four days is their estimate. So that is insane. Um, congratulations Ooh, to <laughs> everybody at Marvel, Disney, uh, especially Ryan Coogler, and um, everybody who was involved with this project because... This has been a long time coming, and um, they delivered a, a real fun movie. Yep. So let's 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 get into our review. Sure. So shortly after the death of King T'Chaka, T'Challa returns to Wakanda to take his father's throne. He uh, soon becomes challenged for that throne uh, based on the sins of his father's past and the sins of Wakanda's past, as well as a re- reoccurring villain for Wakanda, Ulysses Claw. Mm. And then he is later challenged by Eric Kilgrave for the throne, and he must defend his country and his family and his home. And I that's really that's really just like a a really short synopsis of everything sure. without without getting spoiler free because of course you know we're staying spoiler free up front here so that's almost like the marvel studio um story of this film yeah. right and then i think kugler comes back comes from such an indie kind of foundation where he has a lot of these small subtle character pieces for many different characters and the story itself that underlays the whole film as a whole that makes it a lot more have a lot more substance to it than such a oh, absolutely. cut and dry film, especially for a Marvel movie. It's 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 amazing that not saying Chadwick Boseman wasn't good. I mean, he was he was good, but honestly, as far as dialogue goes, as far as like acting goes for him, there wasn't a whole lot of he was he's he's much Way more better a, in Civil War than he yeah, was in this movie. He's much I, more of a I think a physical kinda, presence in the film, but where, at the same time, he, it is a sequel. It's coming right after Civil War, that's true. so he is transitioning into this, this role as a king. It's it's crazy. Civil War came out two years ago. This is the film in the MCU that timeline wise is closest to Civil War. So you're right. This is almost like a direct sequel to Civil War because it's slash prequel to Infinity War. To Infinity War, right? Yeah. Because so much of Infinity War from what we've seen is going to take place in Wakanda mm. and there's a lot of little there's a lot of little nods that are going in and we'll get into that in spoiler in, sure. in spoiler territory where there could be something going on that leads Thanos to coming to Wakanda um but uh, it wasn't really Chadwick Boseman that that drew me in it was it was everybody else i mean obviously right off the bat Michael B Jordan as Eric Kilgrave was awesome yes he makes a, a an incredible entry in the film um you don't know what's up with this character is very um he's very just mysterious and yeah. dangerous and kind of oddly cool <laughs> looking at the same time and then all of a sudden he's gone you don't see him for like about 40 minutes um until he pops back on the yeah. screen again um he, he he was a great villain he's one of the villains in the film uh, but, uh, Lupita Nyong'o, she was absolutely amazing in the film. Yeah. She, you know, she she plays uh, a she, spy of sorts. She plays a spy, Wakanda. but she also plays his his ex. Yes. So I I thought that that was I, I which I, was nice because they didn't cheese it up exactly. You know, they don't do any flashbacks of when you're in love or some kind of dramatic breakup. It was anything like that. You just knew there was something there. Exactly. And uh, Denai Guerrero, who I'm extremely familiar with because I'm I, I I have been known to be a fan of The Walking Dead. This is my first experience with her. Yeah, she, she's fantastic, dude. I 
I hope she, a she brings some of those moves Man. to The Walking Dead, and she brings some of the. I I hope The Walking Dead writers watch this and go, oh, she can act. Let's give her more to do. Because, and not just that physical acting too. Oh yeah, well, right? she's she is in, in in The Walking Dead. She is a physical actor, but okay. this like doing some of her own stunts, and you can tell you can it tell. was her. It's all one shot, not yeah. many cuts. And um, she's whipping that. So thing one of the around. things I noticed. So like the Black Panther action scenes are pretty cut up, right? They're, they're, it's right. it's cut in with live action with CGI, uh, and it's it's it, it's quick cut action. It it was still clean. I never I never felt like I didn't know what was going on, but it was so fast paced that by the time something had happened, you know, they were already moving on to the next thing, which isn't always necessarily a bad thing. I mean, that's the way you would want the Panther to move, right? So, but it, I found myself enjoying the Guerrera's fight scene. I found myself enjoying much the more. women fighting a whole lot Very more. much so. Because there was, the I, I those stunts were My least really favorite. well choreographed. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, I absolutely adored all the stunts and all the fight sequences, except the Black Panther ones, because I thought they were a little underwhelming for some reason. I'm not. I'm no, a little see, surprised by that. But um, the ones that happened by the waterfall, I thought were were great. But we can't say anything too much more about them because they would get yeah. spoilers. But the ones that happened by the waterfall were they, they were, were good. Okay. Um, <laughs> other uh, other standouts: uh, Martin Freeman, who uh, honestly he didn't need to be in this movie. He he, it, but that was just to 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 bring his character back from Civil War and to tie it into that film and everything like that. But he was solid, and and yeah. I like that he his comedy was very underplayed. It wasn't slapstick. It wasn't over the top. Um, and he played. He just played a, like a CIA. And agent. uh, yeah. Letitia Wright, I really enjoyed her. Uh, she she plays Shuri. She plays she plays T'Challa's younger sister. Some people might recognize her from the last episode of the previous season of Black Mirror. Some may recognize her as Q from James Bond, because <laughs> that's who she was. That was one yes. of the things I was picking up in this film. Was I was like, yeah, all right. So so he's Black Panther. He's a superhero, but he's fucking James Bond, right? Yeah. They have a scene where he goes into a casino and he's in a suit and he's looking suave. He's it got women cool. on his arm. You know, he's getting cool gadgets from cool. from a science officer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, oh, it was. I was watching. I was like, yeah, that whole is- sequence was straight out James Bond. It was that whole scene. But in I love that. It was great, and it was a lot of fun. And they had a whole great fight, one take shot. That Kugler right. orchestrated so, two floors up and down. This camera must have been sweeping around like crazy. So, like, if place. you think about it, like, if you think about Winter Soldier, how that was like the political thriller, right? That mm-hmm. that that was more of like your your born identity type spy film. Sure. This was your more fun spy film. This sure. was your James Bond spy film, and I I loved it. I was like, there was there was. I love seeing the different gadgets. I thought they explained them pretty well ish. Um, in the fact that look, they're all made with vibranium. What does vibranium do? Anything you want it to do. Yeah. Any, it's a catch-all. Does it's, it heal people? You're damn right it does. Yeah. <laughs> does it explode on impact? Sure. Why not? Yeah, that's the weird <laughs> thing about that is that it literally <laughs> just magically can do anything. Does it inhabit magical flowers that someone can drink and become superhuman? You, yep. <laughs> yep. Does all that. What can't vibranium yeah. do? And it's like, I don't. Vibranium can. Fixes, uh, it fixes spines. It, it fixes. Uh, vibranium is bullet known wounds. to give spontaneous orgasms to anyone who touches <laughs> it. <laughs> it is such a magical nth metal. Whatever you want it to do, <laughs> just tell it. You know? You're like, hey, I want you to do this. Go do it. All right, and 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 the last few like standouts that I want to talk about real quick. Andy Circus, I loved him as Ulysses Claw. Uh, there, there's a scene where he's being scene interrogated, sure. and yeah, it, it's just it's so good. And he pay, he plays such a slime ball so well. Like you know, it, when, when you see him in interviews and stuff like that, he's a, he's a well dressed guy, like cut hair, sure. takes care of himself. You see him in these scenes, and he's just got like that scruffy beard, and he's just <laughs> he's just yeah, he's showing up the scenery, showing it up. I mean, he was really loving, I think, this role a lot. <laughs> uh, Winston Duke, who played uh, Mabaku, yeah, he actually turned around to be like a really fun character, yeah, and 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 definitely and actually kind of relatable. You you kind of get where he's coming from, and they could have played him ground. as one note. Sure. Like he could have had his scene in the beginning, mm-hmm. um, and 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 that would have been it. You could, and then you know he could have showed up and and been 
something else than what he turns out to be. And you, you would have went with it because it would have fit. It would have fit right. the story and stuff like that. Right. But instead, they they bucked the system a little bit. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed that. You know, the, the film had a little bit of balls, at least with the characters. Not so much with the story, but like with the characters. It had... Forrest Whitaker was just Forrest, Forrest Whitaker. Whitaker. He's just Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the final person, uh, Sterling K. Brown. And if you, if you watch... Uh, you watch he this sneaks is us. in uh, i'll no. tell you and just mm. yeah if if you watch this is us then you know who sterling k brown is uh because he's he's been on that show for 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 two seasons now and, uh, and he i think plays, the people he plays versus oj simpson or something people versus like oj simpson yeah. he's fantastic in that dude i mean dude hasn't done a lot but what the dude does he's quickly becoming an upper rise and he's he's star good. He's good. So, Jay, let's get into uh, let's get into our our positives. Like, obviously, I think we're both we're both positive on on the acting aspect of this film. Like, I, I think they all the actors that they brought in did a fantastic yes. job. Now, I mean, when you I think overall, because we're on that subject, it's shocking how many characters there are in this movie. Yeah, and that they were able to overall balance out each um, each actor and each character. Um, as I said in the pre-production, I'm sorry. other than Daniel Kaluuya, I've been who getting I my was uh, a little bit under. I've, I've been getting all. My, I've been getting my villains mixed up. I keep calling him Eric Kilgrave. It's Killmonger. <laughs> Did you say Kilgrave? Yeah, I said Kilgrave, but it's Killmonger. <laughs> that one went right over my head because, again, like we both yeah. watched Jessica Jones, so yeah, <laughs> I just exactly. would have been like, That's exactly oh, yeah, what I was like, yeah, right. it's Kilgrave. No, yeah. it's Killmonger. Yes. <laughs> yes. Don't hate on us, everybody. Come on. Yeah, I mean, uh, but. And then, like we were talking about beforehand, uh, before we started recording, you know, him coming off, uh, you know, Daniel Kaluuya coming off of Get Out. Sure. You would expect something huge from him. But I think you got to remember that he was cast in this film probably before Get Out had come out. He he had filmed Get Out before this, but I don't think Get Out was, you know, was 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 that. So, I mean, and they never expected it to be right. anything what like I'm saying it is, was. So. He, he was given a smaller role and he played the role that he was given and, and and he played it well. It just there wasn't a whole lot for that role to really to really do. Sure. He also has a love interest in the film in Denai Guerrera and you don't really see a whole lot there in that love interest. It's it's no. it's literally mentioned in act 1 that they are a love interest and then it's brought back up in act 3 and I remember when he said it when he called her my love and I was like, "Oh yeah." Yeah, but that that's that's oh, that's yeah. see that's some of the things that kind of bothered me. It was like I didn't feel that dramatic weight like at that third act when they, no. when that kind of it was just to remind when it came they, to head again. It's it like to remind you, you know, I don't know. during that one scene. Yeah, because most people forgot. That. Yeah, because like, oh, yeah. I I completely forgot. Now I re- I remembered it like early like when they said it earlier on. I was like, oh, that's good. And then Denai Guerrero comes and visits them in in his village mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And she's petting a rhino and everything. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, I get, that makes Adorable. sense. In real life, she's about fifteen years older than him, but <laughs> maybe ten years older than him. But I'll go with it. You but, can't tell. Yeah, you can't tell. But uh, w- when they brought it back up in the in the third act, I was like, I had completely forgotten about that because it's been such a non, it's been such a non part of this film. It's been such a non issue that that to bring it up at at, at the end, I, I felt like did a little bit of disservice to both their characters, where you you missed a little bit of an emotional thread that could have been carried through sure. throughout the 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 whole film. But we don't know what was left on the cutting room floor. So yeah, and it, and if some you know. Some people might have a little bit of issue with Chadwick Bosman's character um, being so more, I guess, on the duller side or a little bit more of a quiet, stoic side. It's he's he's playing that. Well, think about his character and think about what he's gone through at the very beginning. His oh, yeah. father, his idol, just died. Um, there's going to be spoilers later on that we're going to talk about as far as with his relationship with his father and his transition to be a king. And you know, had the respect of his family and his country. Here's the thing: the Marvel. It's, it's, there's a lot going on, so I think he does the best that he can to be the leader that he wants to be, and he wants to be for his people. The Marvel universe cannot be full of of hilarious, charismatic characters. It just right. can't be. You have to have. I I see I see uh, I see Black Panther a lot like I see Captain America. Like that's. He's but far more in, like intense, um, yeah. intense, more intelligent. You know, he's probably oh, yeah. has like you know everything to in his finger pit, um. finger pits. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his fingers in his pits, and he pulls them out, and he smells them <laughs> like that. 
Uh, so one of the things that, that, that really caught my eye in the film was just a, just a world building, just Wakanda itself. I, I really enjoyed the way Wakanda looked. I liked the fact that when they, when they first introduced Wakanda, very similar to how they introduced Asgard, like it's this, it's this sprawling shot that shows this, this, this bustling, almost like alien world, uh, metropolis, uh, and they're flying in. And I thought that that was, that that was a great way to show that, that, that Wakanda is like a complete, like nowhere else in the entire world. And I really enjoyed that. Yeah. But just intimate enough as well. It wasn't like overwhelmingly large, Yeah, but it was still very interesting. Um, a lot of attention to detail, which I really appreciated as well. Um, that was pretty cool. So, and then, um, other than that, as far as the story goes, there's some story elements that I didn't, that I didn't quite, I don't know whether I didn't quite understand them or whether they weren't told well enough. Um, there's, there's several elements that we'll talk about in the spoiler section that, that, you know, well, did you have any non-spoiler like negatives that you, you want to like just bring up? I mean, I mean, for me, like I said before, I think I, I I felt a little bit of the length at times. You know, I I felt like it was a little bit bloated. It was running close to two hours, 15 minutes. I didn't feel that at all. No, I mean, I was thoroughly entertained, but at the same time, I was feeling the time and I thought it could have been a little bit tighter as a whole as the movie. It could have been just there's some things I think could could have been shortened or cut out a little bit. Um no, for but, the most part, every scene that I like I can think of right now, it it added something to to someone's character in some way. You know, I I, I, I can't really think of like a scene where I was like, Well, that was not needed at all. I mean I can think of a character who wasn't needed at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Everett Ross was really needed in this film. Um but He's, you know, he's that's Martin Friedman's character. I don't think he was needed in this film at all. I mean, every, no. everything that that happened surrounding his character could have happened with or without him. But uh, you know, th- that being said, I enjoyed seeing him and I enjoyed what I got from him there. So we just needed to have some kind of American in <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you you do technically, yeah, you do. I mean, I guess I guess his his character serves a purpose too. But it, it makes sense though because he does tie in with Black Panther right. a little bit, and but it makes, you need to have somebody on his side. I guess it going makes sense forward. for him to be there because there has to be someone who who looks at Wakanda for, from an outsider's perspective because right because which is kind of neat to right. see. Because yeah. we are outsiders, technically looking in on sure, it, so sure. so we have to have someone who is who's kind of saying what you would be thinking on right. the screen and stuff and, like and that. That, to really that makes sense. Together. You're so, right. You're right. So yeah, I mean, I really Which, don't have many negatives, Jay. I'm going to be honest. It's it's there's not that many. Yeah, my, mine are CGI mine are heavy. Yeah, it's hugely CGI heavy at times. And and some of the fight sequences I thought were a little underwhelming with the Panthers um, as far as the villain and That's Black true. Panther I will, himself. I will say... Especially in the final fight sequence. Um, I like... It got a little heavy. got a little Spider-Man 3 heavy <laughs> with the CGI, I thought. Especially one particular shot. I, I liked I liked the resolution to that fight, but the the whole fight itself I wasn't crazy about. But yeah. the but that battle that's going on around yes. that I thought was awesome. Yes, I thought was. that was great. It so was. so there was still something to tie me in and, and keep me you know watching and everything like that. So I don't really have many knocks on, on this film at all. I thought I thought the I thought that the that that the the pacing I thought the pacing was great. I thought I thought the I thought the story was good. I thought that the acting was great. There's it doesn't there's there's not much really to to go on as far as like as like dialogue goes you know I mean there's not there's very few of those like every moment feels like there's moments that feel heavy and you but and, and like I was waiting for someone to say something profound and it never comes and maybe I'm asking too much of that like and I was waiting for Black Panther to say some profound things and it really doesn't happen much mm, no not really it comes towards the end, end credit of the film. scene yeah maybe you know but um. Yeah, but it does tie it up. It it does tie up in a nice little bow. I think it has a good ending, um, a bit of a ballsy ending to some degree for certain kind of characters. But overall, I think it worked out pretty well. No, and ten I, and years I like ten the, years later, it's a nice callback. Actually, is what I was thinking about. Ten years later, it's a nice callback. Okay, to 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 how the MCU began, pretty much. So that too. That's that's true. That's right. true. 
Jay, let's let's score this thing before we get into our Ant Man and Wasp trailer park. All right, sure. What do you got for it? A minus. All right. Um, yeah, I was definitely kind of going back actually between a B plus and an A minus, but overall, I just enjoyed the movie just too much to even remotely get it out of the to drop it down below the A category. So, um, like I said, there were some things that, that just really bothered me with the movie that just kind of stuck with me and I couldn't let go to give it a higher grade, but it was. Definitely one of the better Marvel movies that I've seen. Um, other than obviously recently, Thor Ragnarok was a was a just an absolute joy. But um, um, this was a really tough movie to pull off, and I think Ryan Coogler did a hell of a job with writing it and directing it. Um, he's not the only writer, actually. There is another writer that did this, Joe Robert Cole, who is new in Hollywood and is actually right. Um, but he may have been the guy the that they brought in to 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 bring the comic book elements to it. And I hear Donald Glover actually gave story notes as well to Ryan Coogler, who is um, mentioned in the you know special thanks kind of category in the end credits, cool. but. So, but overall, a lot of fun. Really happy for everybody. It was a good film. Kevin really Foggy's film. already asking for Coogler to do a second one. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. Well, I mean, not. you're not surprised with the box office, you know? Like, once you look at that box office, any exec's going to well, be sure, like, sure. Get, just but get he's every- a good filmmaker regardless. Right. So. Just get everybody back. Just get everybody back. <laughs> I think they're starting to learn that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Why why mess up with the formula, yeah. you know? If if they want to continue doing it, let them do it. Absolutely. Just like with the Wonder Woman thing, you know? And then for, for my score, I'm going to give it an A. Um, full on A. Because, you know, I, I enjoyed so many of the characters. But it, it definitely deserves an A for giving us the best Marvel villain, hands down. Yeah, I don't think we talked about that enough. Killmonger um, is is like Eric Killmonger, Michael B. Jordan is he is the best villain that they've had. I enjoy I've enjoyed other villains. I enjoy Loki. However, by by Thor two, I was I you know I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't sold with him anymore. Um, I I really liked him in Thor three, but he was he was less of a villain role in that. And then like I think he got back on everyone's. Yeah, um, favorite side yeah. In, in Ragnarok. Ultron, you know? Ultron sucked. You know, oh, yeah. it's just been there's just been so many. You know, the dark elf guy, he sucked. Uh, Melikaf, <laughs> you know, he was he was terrible. No, uh, easily know. this is I think yeah, um, the best villain, and it, it is. is for me for sure, hands down. And and you know, even though he does wind up as like that, and we see it in the trailers as like that trope that that he becomes you know the the same exact type of villain like. You know you what can, I mean? Like, under, like in Ant Man, he's fighting a shrinking guy. In 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 Iron Man, right. he's always fighting a a, a super powered suit guy. You know, like and yeah, okay. So Black Panther eventually has to fight a guy who becomes the Black Panther also. But the way they the way they got it there was so much better, and 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 the way that they did it with with depth to his character, and and the, and and not just strong that strong backstory, yeah. but but also depth uh, 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 in that about our world at, uh, as a whole. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, as it, a society, right? Yeah. It was he wasn't just he wasn't just writing his his own injustices. In he some felt ways, he was this writing is his movie as well, right? His he story. Fe- he felt like he was writing the injustices of the entire world for an entire race of sure, people. Sure. So I I really got. I, it's it's weird. It's like I got behind it and I was like, ah, shit, you're way too militant, though. <laughs> <laughs> like anybody well, else with your message. A couple of the lines in the third act. Yeah, he's, yeah. he goes a little heavy on yeah, the military. Yeah, he's just like, yeah, he's so like, yeah well, let's just kill them all. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, Wow! Well, wait, what do you mean, Mary? Well, what's going on here? Okay. <laughs> but I, I thought, I thought he was—he's absolutely one of the one of the best villains that that Marvel has had. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I, I honestly, I don't have high hopes for Thanos being that great of a villain. Um, I think physically imposing villain, absolutely, but I don't think he's going to be not emotionally. He's not no. going to have that kind of same weight. You're not going to connect with, with him because no, I no. can't connect with with a a, a chewed up piece of bubble gum that no. punches people in the face. I, I I can't connect with that on an emotional level. But but Killmonger, you know, I can right because because they do tie it into his backstory. You and get they show it to us, him. And, it, yeah. and, and you understand, you get his viewpoint and where and where he grew up. And and his mindset coming up through life, yeah. you know. And my wife even said she's just like God. I really like Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> she's like, and I I don't like seeing him as a bad guy, but he was a really good bad guy. And I was like, he yeah, was yeah. absolutely. It's his first role, I think, as a villain. Yeah, for the most part that I know of. Yeah. And so I was I was absolutely floored with him and and his performance for the most part. I mean, there's some character aspects I was like, Neh. you know. 
all all the scars. I, I was like, eh, what? Yeah, I could have I could have done without that. But I mean, visually, it's kind of cool looking. I mean, just adds a little something. It kind of makes sense with that kind of kid with that kind of background, perhaps having a little bit of a like a self interest behavior kind of thing, you know, with it. And then also the military thing, you know, you have your little badges of honor. That's kind of like trophies. And that was one of my that was one of my favorite speeches that that, you know, when when he first comes to when he first gets to Wakanda and, you know, he's talking about how he's he's killed on this continent, that continent for this government, for that government. He's killed, you know, he's killed his own people and everything like that. And like I, I just absolutely loved that moment. And he's like, and I did it all to get right here. I was like, for this moment. Yeah, yeah, for this moment. And I was like, all right, I'm sold, man. I'm kind of, yeah, kind of on your side. I was, you know, I, I, you know, you, you, that's, that's the amazing thing about this film, I think, is, is showing, given, given the, the audience that kind of conflict. But back in the day, that's what Marvel Comics. The villain and the hero. That's what, that's what always made Marvel Comics stand out against DC Comics. I mean, I'm not talking about in recent years, but like back in the day, it was always that DC villains were always one note. They all wanted to destroy the world. They all wanted to rule Gotham. They all wanted to kill Batman. They all wanted to kill Superman. Like, that's it. That's all they wanted to do. Their motivations were, were, were weak. And Marvel always had these villains that were dark reflections of, of their heroes and they always had these tragic stories that, that you can actually get behind them right because dr doom used to be best friends with reed richards and magneto was best friends with charles xavier and they both fight for a similar cause charles and and magneto but they both go about it in different ways and i think that's very similar to what's going on here with with killmonger and and black panther they're both fighting for a cause but they both have two different ideas about how to go about doing that. And unfortunately, you know, one of them has to go so that the other one can, can thrive. And I thought it was really well done for the, for the villains role. So, yeah. All right, let's get over to our trailer park. I just have one question. When cap needed help, if I'd asked you, would you have come? I guess we'll never know. But if you had, you'd have never been caught. I do some dumb things. And the people I love the most, they pay the price. Thanks to you, we had to run. We're still running. Let's go. just need someone watching your back. Like a partner. Hold on. You gave her wings and blasters. So I take it you didn't have that tech available for me? No, I did. Isn't that what life is all about, Jay? Exactly. Just just dodging giant Pez dispensing Hello Kitties. Like I just feel like that's that's what happens in life. Like you just That's like a money shot for the parents, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you just, you know, like you're just driving down the street, you know, having a good day, bright sunny California afternoon. Yeah. Life that's just fantastic. throws a fucking Hello Kitty Pez dispenser at you. Yeah, like 20 what? foot. <laughs> Did they even make them anymore? Like I guess Pest so. Dispensers? Hell yeah, they do. I just I don't know. I, my, <laughs> I haven't my, seen one in my daughter 15, loves twenty years. My daughter loves them. I I buy them every now awesome. and then if I awesome. like them. You know, I mean, I don't, I'm not like a collector of them, but yeah, they still make them. I don't know where they're at. Like I've, I don't think I've ever seen them. <laughs> It's so long. So the Ant Man and Wasp trailer uh, that that premiered before Black Panther, uh, yes. and I was really surprised because I didn't. It, it wasn't one of those ones that like I, I saw online beforehand. I It may have been out online beforehand, but 
I I didn't I didn't catch it before that. I, I don't just, think they even needed to. Yeah, I mean, Black Panther was going to be a massive success um, regardless, and that's all the promotion that you need to give. One of the things I noticed about the trailer, first off, is I really like the score that they had that they have playing throughout this. I was going to mention that, yeah. but. It's a little on a louder side That's and okay. bolder side, and I kind of liked it. I, yeah. I really dug it. And uh, but it, was, it just reminded me that like we didn't talk about it, but like the the Black Panther score, I wasn't crazy about. I really enjoyed the soundtrack. Oh yeah, but definitely. the score I didn't like so much. But this like I I really I really I, I feel like it just fits the character, and I feel like you know from what we're seeing with the effects and stuff like that, they're. It, it, I think this time Peyton Reed uh, is he's back to direct is having some fun sure. with, with and the technology with this shrinking technology yeah. now you and know the, like but also a, the technology in general is a lot better now yeah. these, so he can do a lot more with that and make it look a little bit more cooler and a little bit more realistic I, I, I think I think it just comes from directing the first film sure and uh, now you know he came in he came into the first film. And so much of pre-production was already done on it, right? Like most of that was under Edgar Wright. Right. So he 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 kind of took what was there and made it his, and then put a movie out. And the movie was okay. It, it's it's not one of Marvel's finest, but it's certainly enjoyable. Um, I think this time Peyton Reed's now gotten to do it from the ground up. The unfortunate thing is this has five screenwriters. Including Paul Rudd. Oh, Marvel movies do. Well, Paul Rudd gets a screenwriting credit sure. because of all of his ad libbing. I mean, that's of course that's why he gets a screenwriter's credit. But it, still, five. If you told <laughs> me Evangeline it, Lilly had one, I'd be like, wow. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, Evangeline Lilly looks fantastic. Dude, I really looks- love her chemistry with Paul Rudd, and and same same thing with Michael Douglas. I think Kate he looks- from Lost is back. Finally, right, I missed her. All right, because like I, I haven't seen her in so long, and she's gonna have a lot of great scenes and sequences because she's a badass in general as a person. She's still fucking and, attractive. Oh, absolutely. Marvel's doing a great job, uh, you know, more so recently than than in the past of really of really highlighting the the female characters. Like this movie isn't called Ant Man too; it's called Ant Man and the Wasp. So if 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 she was barely in it and if she wasn't badass and yeah. kicking ass, then you you, you and it, they teased that in the first movie. Oh, they absolutely did. Yeah. So she warranted this headline, you know. Yeah, but sequel. again, just like Black Panther being backed up by a bunch of badass women, mm-hmm. like you know, that's that's. There's nothing, and you know the great thing also about Black Panther with that movie, they don't make a big thing about it. Like no. the guy, like it, everyone's equal. It's, I mean, Paul Rudd you know. makes a big thing out of it, but that's more that 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 more lends to his character. That's and character. His, yeah. That's character. Yeah, and and his his unease with himself. Sure. <laughs> but uh, there's there's some there's some really cool there's some really cool uh, scenes that I like. I like the shrinking of the building, which um, does raise some questions. But it's fun. You know? I I, it's, I it's, want it's so I, I want like at the end when they when they resize that building. They go in and it looks like a war zone inside I there. Like so. everything I, is all over the place. I think they're gonna have like quick yeah. if they have it in the budget to do stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm also, <laughs> but I'm really Michael looking Douglas forward is to, just like every time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing um, some sequences with Michael um, Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer what back if, in the day. What as, if that building was fully staffed when he shrunk it? <laughs> It could be. Everybody's at their desks, and their desks have like they probably belts have, and they have to strap it. They probably have, yeah. They probably have protocol for that. <laughs> and then we get that scene where Walter Gog, where where Ant Man is 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 looking over the uh, Golden Gate Bridge, and yeah. Walter Goggins is there holding it. You can just think of all the people inside their offices just strapped in. They're like, oh, hold on. <laughs> Here we go again. That's a movie in and of itself. <laughs> Being the office workers that get shrunk in the giant building mm-hmm. <laughs> and have to get carried around by Walter Goggins. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned for that short film on the Blu-ray features. That, yeah, exactly. That, yeah, that, that, that'll be the Marvel short film. <laughs> Agent Coulson will have to shrink down and rescue them all. <laughs> nice, nice, tidy, like, you know, 50-minute short, you know. <laughs> now, um... Obviously, Scott Lang is out of prison. Last time we saw him, he, it was in Civil War, and he was in prison. And um, obviously, this takes place sometime after Civil War, but he's obviously under house arrest. And more than likely, he's under house arrest for his crimes, I guess, yeah. against against the country uh, for helping I, Captain America. I don't America. think it's going to be much later than mm. how like Black, pa- Black Panther just picked but up But it's crazy, because it, it, it comes out... It wasn't it com- long after. It takes place before Infinity War, comes out after Infinity War, which makes me believe that... Ant-Man will not be in Infinity War Part 1. 
because this will probably this movie will um, probably lead him in to when he joins the Infinity War for for that, that part. That makes two. sense. That makes sense. So yeah, I don't I don't think you'll see him in this, or he'll be the end credit scene or or something like that for okay. for for Infinity War. But I I but I think that's I think that's kind of. I think it's kind of telling about how they how they really feel about this character and this film to put it as the film that follows up Infinity War, right? Because Infinity right. War is supposed to be like the thing that that leading you in there, and they're like, "There's got to be some kind of good cliffhanger to what, lead into this movie." That's you know, what I'm saying. after Infinity, that's War, what I'm saying. Right? The Infinity War. It, like end credit scene will be Ant Man or final like sequence or something yeah. like that. All of a sudden, or Ant Man will be involved sure. in somehow, and yeah. then we go into the Ant Man movie, and that's end credit sequence will be how he excited. is moving into yeah. Yeah, yeah. the second part of Infinity War, which isn't Infinity War Two. It'll have its own name, but the name is and a what's spoiler. The, so, what's the next Marvel feature coming out after Ant Man and a Wasp? Captain Marvel. And then Jay shortly shortly following Captain Marvel, which you know you just looked it up. So you said it comes out March 2019. Yes. So then the one after that is Avengers Part Two, Avengers Infinity War Part Two, the untitled one. But that comes out in May 2019. Mm-hmm. So we will have quite a large gap between Marvel films for the first time in a while, unless Venom is in the Marvel universe, in which case... To be honest, I kind of think that's smart. Yeah. Oh, you know, I, I mean, I we've had quite a bit of films, um, and, th- and give give us a little bit of a break. Well, I think whatever happens in Avengers Infinity War, we're going to need a little bit of a break. I think right. I think the cliffhanger or what, and, what we get at the end of that will then, be heavy. So, Just throwing this out there, just because I'm an asshole... Why the fuck did they not keep the December release date for Solo Star Wars Story? Like, I just feel like they need to keep that release date. I think it works better. Here's exactly why. Because it's not strong enough. It's not. I didn't want to say that, Dave. It's not strong. I didn't want to say that in front of you. Thank you for saying that. It's okay. I was. I, that's kind of what I've, I was. Jay, I've been against these these type I know, of Star I know, Wars. I know, but I was while, I was so. kind of thinking that. But at the same time, it's like my God, Disney has such a large gap now i mean they're banking on mary poppins in december now like really mary poppins that has its following dude i know my dad but that will, better my, have my dad better see, have a fucking kick-ass my trailer. dad will see mary poppins my dad loves the original mary poppins so they better and, have and, a kick-ass trailer for and, me and, to get to that theater. and that's just not me saying like my dad like my dad's generation loves that movie loves mary poppins i know like, well the baby boomers are they're thriving still <laughs> <laughs> too many of them yeah <laughs> so uh this this trailer it, you know it, it goes into we do see a brief glimpse of one of this film's villains uh ghost um and we don't really see we don't really see them do a whole lot we really just see a, a quick three second glance of what the and costume we're still looks not like. even sure who that is behind the costume not a hundred percent not a hundred percent no but uh, I, I I dig that costume. That costume looks badass. Like it looks like it's straight out of like the video it game does. Overwatch or something. Yeah. It does. Um. And and we see a little bit of like of like their powers. Like we see them looking at their hand and like they're like phasing in and out. And then we see they're the one driving uh driving them leading the motorcycles against them in the van. Um. But what am I? I I think the thing I just really enjoyed about this trailer is is Paul Rudd and his one liners. And I mean I well. That's, that's what I, mean, I think you, you and I both character. love Paul Rudd. Yeah, um, I always have. I, for gosh, I, I can't remember when I first started loving him. I mean, probably the first role he's ever been clueless I've seen. Back in, uh, yeah, love probably, Paul Rudd since probably, clueless. Probably, <laughs> probably. You're right. Um, <laughs> God damn, I feel old. Uh, <laughs> so, but it's it's good to see him have this. It's perfect, perfect movie for him. And also, it's just movie just pops off the screen it is just so much fun to look at yeah. and and there's gonna be so much great scenes visually action dialogue it's gonna be fun funny and um there's gonna be an emotional current underneath because he's gonna be battling being a father with his da- young daughter and him being you know under house arrest and then just try to like still contend with i gotta help and fight these bad guys outside what do I do? Right. You know, like it's it's gonna be like a little bit of a dynamic between that. So it'll be interesting. I'm 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 definitely looking forward to it and you know, Evangeline Lily. Mm. Yeah. Still. Mm. Yeah, still. After all these years. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm I'm definitely I'm definitely looking forward to it. There's a, 
like I said, I, I'm really looking forward to the fact that Peyton Reed is getting his chance to to build this one from the ground up. He's not he's not taking over the reins like he's been holding them the whole time throughout this one. And I think that's gonna that's and they've gonna had plenty volumes. of time yeah. in between the two films. Yeah. yeah, I think that's I think that's gonna speak volumes for it. Super interested in just seeing where they take it. Really looking forward to that to that spaceship that they show. Well, the the spaceship that 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 shrinks down, and it looks like that's gonna be the vehicle they use to go get Janet Van Dyne out of the the microverse. Right. right, because because one person can't shrink down, they'll become lost. But I think I think Hank's been building this machine, and we see there's a I giant. Hope that's not too long of a sequence. If you look <laughs> on the right hand side, there's a giant Duracell battery on the right hand side, which makes me think that that ship is already small. It's already it's already pequeño. <laughs> oh god! And then they're gonna fly it fly it into into the the microverse to funny. find janet and okay. stuff like that yeah maybe. and and l- like you i i am kind of looking forward to like old missions with like 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 the same way they did it in ant-man one uh, you know yeah. they showed 19 1989 or whatever it was in 1992 whatever when he came in to punch that shield dude right in the face that was yeah. great yeah, yeah yeah no exactly i mean that's that that stuff and then with the de-aging technology um being better and better in each film you know, it'll be pretty cool to see uh, young Michelle Pfeiffer again. Woo! And uh, going to see Dangerous Minds, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, all up in you. <laughs> all up in your Scar- face. Coked up Scarface, uh, Michelle Scarface, Pfeiffer. Scarface, Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> Catwoman, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, oh, that's, that's my girl. <laughs> All right, so coming up next, uh, me and Jay are going to jump right back into Black Panther, and we're going to get into full spoiler territory. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. But uh, Jay, let's just run through some of the specifics of the film, some of our favorite scenes, and and we can get into specifics of things that we didn't really like so much now. Um, Like we were talking about, vibranium. It's a cure for everything. Fucking everything. That really fucking bothered me but they it, just don't explain it yeah they don't really explain like so uh, before just that this it comes from a flower i guess and then it goes into another well no 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 it doesn't come from a flower all right so the way vibranium works is a meteorite struck africa right where wakanda sits now yes okay and all of vi- and, and the majority of vibranium on the planet resides there and they have been mining it for years, and apparently they've only they've only barely scratched the surface of the reserves of it. But previous to this, we had always thought that vibranium was a metal because we've seen Captain America's shield made of vibranium. Right. It's metal. We've seen, uh, you know, we've seen um, Black Panther's claws, yes. metal. And then they they said, well, there's there's a vibranium weaving in his suit. Okay, they, you know, that's the same as like as like Kevlar weaving and stuff like sure, that. Sure, sure. So I I could see there being weaves of metal and stuff like that. But what I'm is the stuff that. that they're drinking? Right. All right. And then they said that 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 it's radiated the soil and has changed the plant life, and and everything uh, there is kind of like. So, so the animals that eat the plants are kind of like souped up. I mean, I think that's why like the, the rhinos, like the rhinos, I think right. like the rhinos are kind of like souped up. So, um, but, but, but what I don't get is, so, so do those flowers, do they only grow in the, inside that mountain? And ha- have they always just said like, only the black Panther touches these only him ever. Well, that's the weird thing. And they have one that takes away the powers and then one that like right. gives them the powers. That's that, when I was watching. I was like, but oh. then they also give, I guess, a little bit of droplets of it to right. heal certain people. Vibranium, I, I don't equals like kryptonite. It can right. be your catch-all for everything right. if you need it to be. It's very bizarre. Right, I mean, but, I feel like they needed like a. I hope hopefully they don't, on the DVD there's some kind of special feature yeah, thing with done by Bill Nye the Science Guy or or Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who explains just break it down for us dummies and the, like the, like, fic- the fictitious on. properties yeah. of vibranium because you know the comic books isn't giving us all that much details probably explaining it but well the, enough so one of the but, things i really i really dug is when he kind of goes into the afterlife which is something that happens in the comics mm. black panther does go into the afterlife to talk to past kings and to talk to his father and yeah, stuff like, like that. that i really enjoyed that and it's one of the things that made me think that the way it was like a purple haze and stuff like that, yeah. I, I I kept thinking. I was like, "Is can they do that because of the Soul Stone? <sighs> and is that why Avengers: Infinity War is going to fight in Wakanda because the Soul Stone is there? Oh, which is <sighs> why he can talk to the kings of the past. Interesting. I also got a huge Mufasa vibe from that, but 
<laughs> I know, I know. But at the same time, Michael B. Jordan, he went back to the apartment and saw his father. But he did that while he's stuck in the apartment. But he, he did didn't that have a proper wa- death. But he did that while in Wakanda or a proper burial. I'm sorry, he didn't have a proper burial, and right. I think that's why he's stuck in the apartment and not in that afterlife kind of place. No, I think that was under, that's only other- reserved for kings anyway. Okay. It seemed like that that place was know. reserved for kings, but um, yeah, because they were all back panthers. They were all panthers. All right. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have enjoyed well, seeing one of the, a few of the other ones come down and like maybe talk and stuff. But it was very important for it was very important for T'Challa to to do like an uncle like bust balls kind of sequence, you know, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah T'Challa, his, his grandfather, his grandfather What's just shows up and he's just like, <laughs> I always knew you'd be nothing. <laughs> That'd be so great. Just like, like your father. Just like some like weird hippie looking guy. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> I watched as you looked away. Never his mind on where he was. <laughs> what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so perfect. That'd be, you know, but there, there was there was a lot of great humor sprinkled throughout the whole. A little film. bit, a little, a little bit, bit um, from time to time, from places uh, that you wouldn't when really she gives, even expect. When she gives him his. She calls them sneakers uh, when she gives him those soulless shoes. Those, 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 those well, those shoes that are nothing. They don't but make any noise, yeah. right? But and she calls them sneakers. Like but she James said, Bond shoes. <laughs> no, but she said like that American movie that Daddy used to love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back to the Future was yeah. that movie that Daddy used to because that that's the one with the self lacing shoes and yeah. stuff like that. That actually I, that that did not come to me at the time. I was trying to think about it, but also um, Winston Duke who plays Umbaku, yeah, Umba- who challenged. Uh, Chitala first um, t- for the throne he had a great arc that was really surprising and I don't think any of us actually saw it coming um, and, no. and, and really and like, was really it turned to be pretty funny because he's a big presence he's a big guy and like I was saying before I was like they he very easily could have been the person who Killmonger went to first instead of instead of Daniel Kaluuya like if, if, if he could have very easily gone to to him first and you know wound up just being very paint by numbers uh you know one one guy who has already been a an adversary of the black panther is now aiding the other guy who's an adversary of the black panther in the same yeah. way that Ulysses Claw was you know doing the same thing with kill with Killmonger in the beginning and i was that that brings me to another thing All right, what was the purpose of what was the purpose of Ulysses Claw's relationship with Killmonger? Why did Killmonger even keep him around? If he was only there to be the body that got him to Wakanda, mm. why not kill him right up front, drag his ass to any type of plane, and fly him to Wakanda, and chuck his ass in front of the first Wakandan you see, and see, like, look. I felt like he needed him in order to find exactly where it is in the country. Okay. I mean, I... I he obviously knew exactly where he was going when I don't he walked rem- up with the dead body. I don't remember there. Al- I don't remember there being they a didn't, line. They didn't show any lines. I don't think. But I think. I, I think it was just sort of implied, or like because he knew where it was. Right. He's, he's the been, guy who knew. He's been there. He stole the vibranium right. from there before. So once he got what he needed from him, he was like, "All right, I'm done." Which with you. we, which we, you know, we find out that it was that it was uh, T'Challa's uncle, uh, T'Chaka's brother, who was played by Sterling K. Brown, who who aided. Ulysses Claw in stealing that vibranium, which is why T'Chaka killed him, and that, that that's really like the, that's really the struggle that 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 um that that T'Challa is having throughout this entire film is that you know his father murdered his brother and in, in his eyes yeah. he murdered his brother he didn't he didn't take him back to Wakanda he didn't have him stand trial he didn't want the he didn't want the royal family's name to be sullied by that but, so he just killed his brother and left him dead in the apartment which you could see where Killmonger would be like that's fucked up sure and. I'm well, a little miffed about this. <laughs> yeah, well, but and but at the same time, the great thing is that you could see why the reasonings are of each character and why they did what they did. Like you know why the king did it because he was looking at the the larger scope of the whole country. Right, right, the right. Reasons behind that, but as a moral, as a person, as a man, your family, your brother, like you're gonna really just do that. <laughs> and then we, Come you know, on. we talked about the the love story. Uh, between uh, Daniel Kailua and um, Denai Guerrera and how it was brought up in the first act and then not touched upon again in the third act. That scene, that, like they were only they were only together in this film so the rhino could charge at her and she could whistle at it and it would stop and lick yeah. her face. Yeah, pretty much. 
This is the whole point. So, I got a laugh out of that scene. Yeah, I thought no, that was sure. I thought that was adorable. I thought it was cute. It was funny, and I, I, and I like that it was what kind of ended the fight as well. You know, the the fight ended not with when he kneeled, and right? Gave up. Not with bloodshed. Like it's it's you know. Right. I mean, I'm don't get me wrong. People died. <laughs> like, like sure. I, I that's another thing. They kind of glossed over the fact that Wakanda just kind of had a civil war. Like it, it lasted. It oh, lasted it was for, my by for, far civil war for 24 hours. But people died. Wakandans killed Wakandans. And they and, didn't. They didn't back down from showing Michael B. Jordan I mean, kill a lot of people. But hold on, we don't know. They might have just sprinkled some vibranium on everybody, and everyone stood up and got. <laughs> And everybody was fine. It could have. Everybody's fine. Don't worry. But but it seems like we are um, ser- we are we are serving but the vibranium Kool Aid over but, on the right. If you were injured in battle, go get it. If your friend died in battle, shove it in his wounds. But the thing is, you only see fine. his sister Shuri be the only like person that does everything in the lab and does all the you know doctorly things and all that stuff one I mean, black panther one scientist <laughs> yeah i guess i mean i guess they keep the the privacy and everything so, like that but also i don't think anybody else needs to have any of those things happen to them because they're just regular civilians completely safe it's a I safe guess. safe 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 city i guess nothing happens in that city but i mean they do gloss over the fact that a lot of Wakanda. I think they did mention that in the first act. Yeah. It was like it's like a, it's a perfectly it's a utopia city. It's supposed to be a utopia. Yeah, it's supposed to be you know a, like something that every society strives to be. They've been doing it for thousands of years, right. and and you know that that's supposed to be the weight of of what T'Challa does at the end when he stands up at the UN uh, and and he says that they're going to share their secrets with the world, and everyone's just like, what can the world learn from a bunch of farmers? And he just smiles like he very easily could have just turned into the Black Panther right then. And, and and had his Iron Man moment. But he pretty much was. I mean, that's what it was. It was an Iron Man moment. That's what I was alluding to it was. earlier on when, when, when I said, like, but even in the, 10 but, years later, they've come full circle. But not even just that, but also in the movie when the kid asks him, right. who are you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he just smiles, and that's my cut. Yeah. You know, that's it at the end of the movie. You know he's not in hiding anymore. You know Wakanda is going to be out, and and they are going to share their technology. As it should. He's, But he is Tony Starking himself, right? He is, like, he's now he's now taking what he's done, and he's and he's, and he's he's stopping the... It's bold, but it's for the greater done. good right. of mankind. But he not also just knows, his people, but for the people of Earth. But he also knows that now that brings unwanted attention to wakanda and those those who who seek power will go to them he's not an idiot i'm sure he knows that absolutely but i think he feels like it's worth the risk but i think that was but you know what i was saying before that was one of my biggest flaws of the film just glossing over the fact that wakanda had a civil war well that and and then also not i would be pretty fully explaining the powers right um well enough to the audience i would um I would be pretty remiss if if Black Panther two came out and they they didn't at least touch on that a little bit. You know the fact that 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 Killmonger easily turned two tribes against the other two tribes and you know yeah you know, and and people died in that battle. That would that would kind of bother me a little bit because I feel like that should have some sort of weight. If you've lived in a utopia for thousands of years and now all of a sudden there's some there's a bit of strife, you know that 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 should echo throughout throughout Wakanda and and have some have some reverberations into the next film. Um how about Killmonger's death? I really enjoyed that. That was a beautiful scene. I thought it was great. Yeah. I think it was well deserved. I think it was a ballsy um ending as far as like his dialogue. Yeah. I even know. like that, you know, I even like that uh that you know Black Panther offered to save him and he's like, "Why? So I can live as a prisoner?" And I like I like the way that he brought that full circle and he's yeah. just like He's like Right, he's like, I had he's, ancestors jump off the ship because they didn't want to be in prison. They'd rather be dead. It was better off that way. Yeah, I'm like, damn. Yeah, yeah. That, that was a statement piece right there. And, yeah. and and it and it stays true with the character. And I think a lot of people are upset because they want to see more of him. Me too. But at you, the same time, well, here's the thing: you can. He's going to live on forever, and he's going to be a great villain for. You can see more of him because in the comic books, Killmonger's died probably several times and been brought back to life. Get out. Yeah. Eh. Now, I mean, I so far the MCU has I mean, not he said has, he wanted to be dumped in the ocean. I mean, pff. I mean, it's so far, so far in the MCU, no one really has been brought back to life. Uh, any villain has died and been brought back to life. So, give it ten years. Give it ten years. <laughs> yeah. Give it. You, you could put anybody in that. Uh, <laughs> in that. In that. In that red. After in that Infinity, red skull mask. After Infinity War two, it's just. It's wide open. Yeah. So, it's wide open for Marvel. But I mean, like, these are like nitpicky things, right? I mean, as a whole, 
it was it's still it was it was still a great film it's it really just, was it was i i just still can't believe the balance of of juggling so many different characters and making it work and 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 the rapport and the chemistry between all of the actors um in all the scenes and the sequences i it just the chemistry of it i was really impressed by kugler's work in this really overall and, Which, and despite like my critic with the whole like saying it was bloated you know now, obvi- despite that, I, I still feel like he has so much going on in this movie where like I was very impressed that he was able to do what he did. Now, honestly, I can see Coogler doing it too. Could you see Coogler doing anything else in the Marvel Universe after after Black Panther? So here's what I'm, here, here's what I'm, he, he he's he there's he, nothing left uh, in right. the pipeline right now. But he so he eventually down the down the line absolutely. But I think he goes back to smaller. He's projects still so after. young. I think oh he no, goes no. Back to smaller no, I'm projects. talking about down the line, yeah. Dave. I mean, he's a young guy. But you but you're talking he's about he's going to go he, back to his young. You're talking about how he balanced a ways, an ensemble sure. cast so well. The Russo brothers could possibly be done after after these next two Avengers films, and I would like to see them do that. I like to see them take a break and do some regular films. Uh, I would like to see them take a five year break after these Avengers films and of just course. be done and be and be done for a while. And when you come back, it might not be a reboot. You might pick up where you left off, but that gives people enough distance for things to change, and people don't feel so so tied to it and stuff like that. But I wouldn't mind seeing a Ryan Coogler. Avengers type film because I feel like of he course. balanced the ensemble cast no, no, so no, well. Definitely, definitely. That being no, said, I'm really could do that. I mean, as far as from this movie comes from, but at the same time, this movie has such a weight and and it's such an importance to get right. Um, you know, and, and and for such a for the culture and 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 also just for many different kind of people. I mean, being fans and and having the first um, real big. Not not the first. I'm sorry. There has been other, um, you know, black superheroes put on screen before, but nothing of this kind of caliber and, and this resonance as no, black nothing, before. nothing like this at all. You know, you, nothing you, you, like this. Hancock doesn't count, <laughs> and I would even say like Blade doesn't count because the main point of that was well, that he was a half vampire, half human. And though the fact yeah. that Blade was black rarely came up in those films. <laughs> sure. But so you know, I think there there was so much going for this, and 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 I'm really happy that it's a good movie. Yeah, I really am because I wanted it to be one. And once, the f- oh, God damn, Marvel. Here's Marvel one of things, just knows how to make a good. Here's movie, one of the right? things that like really bothered me, like with with, with, with with some of the things that people were saying. We're like, well, this is a black power film. No, it's not a black power film. That sounds like my father. It's a people power film. Like it's it, it yeah. empowers people in yeah. general. That's it. And and that that was one of the things that I that I really took away from it was like it's it, it it's a it's a film that's that's meant to empower people as as a whole like not not a specific not a specific race even though the character is a specific race you know he's he's not at the end he's not sharing his technology with one race of people he's sharing his technology with the entire world it's about having one world and helping the entire world and yep. that's that was one of the things that i that i really enjoyed with the with the final like message of of the film definitely and jay finally you know a- after that message we, you know we got uh we got our mid credit scene which is his tony stark moment which we touched on we did not touch on the after credits scene with yes. the white wolf <laughs> which in in Black Panther uh, comic books, there is a White Wolf. He was a he was a pilot. He was he was a young boy whose family crashed in Wakanda. His family died. He was raised by T'Chaka as uh, T'Challa's I adopted you, brother. I, yeah, I wanted you to talk about this because I yeah. was confused by that. He was his adopted brother, but they did not do that in in this film. There was no you know there was no. There was no adopted brother, the White Wolf. There was the Winter Soldier. They're calling him the White Wolf. With so, no arms still. With no arms still. Uh, and they do mention, you know, Sh- uh, Shuri mentions that he's cured of the of the Winter Soldier brainwashing. And he's living in Wakanda, but he's kind of like on the outskirts. He's kind of like on, on, on a river bend and stuff. He's living in a small village. And one of the things that like that I thought like when they called him White Wolf, I was like, is that his new role? Like is 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 he going to stay in Wakanda and and fight for T'Challa's cause? They can easily give him because, another right, arm. Well, because right, yeah, yeah, easily. But in the comic books, 
um, the White Wolf is is kind of like the head of that spy organization that that they that they talk about in the in the film. You know, they they talk about their war dogs. Yeah, White Wolf is the head of that. Right in the in the comic books. So, um, you know, is that what? I mean, that seems like the I perfect think it has role. To be. It has to Buck- be right. Right, but if Cap- why would they have it as a fucking end? Ensi- but if Captain America dies, then Bucky can't become Captain America because he's already White Wolf in it. But it's over. Pretty much that this yeah, I this whole sequence of characters and a- actors playing these roles after Infinity War Two is pretty much over. You know, the whole Bucky turning into Captain America. Maybe in 10, 15 years when they revamp it again, they'll do that kind of storyline. But they decided to keep Chris Evans. And I don't blame them. I really don't. I mean, Sebastian Stan, I think he's a decent actor. There's still also Sam Wilson. I still can't see him doing the level of job that Chris Evans has done. There's still also Sam Wilson, who becomes Captain America in the comics as well, after after Cap uh, can no longer be Captain America at one point. So there's other options. It's not happening. But um, it... It might happen. <laughs> you know, you know nothing of what could happen after this. The, the, that second uh, Avengers movie, you know nothing. Oh no, no. I, I, oh yeah, oh, no, hundred percent. After that movie, I, yeah, yeah. Don't, no. So, so they. I'm not saying anything. Sebastian Stan no. ain't, ain't exactly doing a whole lot other than other than these Marvel films and his indie films, and yeah. that's about it. So, um, good luck, buddy. I, I thought I thought that was I just thought that was interesting, and I really liked seeing him because the whole time throughout the film, when they're like, "We need help," and I was like. They're gonna get Winter Soldier, and Lauren's just like they're probably not. <laughs> and it's like, it's like call call the War Dogs. They're gonna get Winter Soldier. No, they're not. <laughs> and then finally, I was like, Winter Soldier's gonna be an end credit scene. She's like, Yeah, no shit. <laughs> okay, but at least at least now we now we know that like by the time we get to Infinity War, you know he is he he's he is in Wakanda. He's cured, and we know that he gets a new arm. Uh, so just based on the trailer, the infinity war trailer. So we right. know he gets a new arm, but, uh, so that's going to do it for our spoiler section here. The, uh, for, for black Panther, if we missed any Easter eggs, any spoilers that we should have touched on, please reach out to us on Twitter at super movie pod. Let us know what we should have discussed. Uh, let us know if we missed anything. If you're a, if you're a huge black Panther comic book reader, you know, just let us know, uh, you know, what in the film that resonated from the comics did, 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 did they get right? What from the comic books did they not really touch on that, that you really wish that they did also, uh, be sure to listen to our network partner in session film. They also have their their Black Panther review up, as well as several other of the Podfix Network shows. So you can check those all out at www.podfixnetwork.com. And please, if you're enjoying the show and you listen on iTunes, head over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five star review. Uh, we've got a couple in the in the past few weeks, and we will we will be reading some of them off on our next episode. So I want to thank everybody for listening. Have a great night. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.